Stop wasting taxpayers' money. Letter shows hard evidence that Megan and Harry's claim that they were cut off by the royal family is absolute tosh. Which means that he has no business filing this lawsuit against the UK government. Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to the King YouTube channel. It's pretty easy to observe that Harry and Meghan are big fans of filing lawsuits, and one of the lawsuits that Harry has filed is against the UK government. Yes, his own family's government. But anyway, it's all about the UK government's decision to strip him and Meghan of their UK taxpayer-funded security when he and Meghan quit their positions as working royals and moved to the US. So Harry claims that it put him and Meghan and the Invisible Children in so much danger, and that he has a right to security when he comes back to the UK because he says he is the son of the king. Harry claims that he and Meghan expected to still have security when they moved, and they were absolutely cut off, which put them in a dangerous position. But according to some newly published letters, that might not be the case. So there's this letter that was written by Sir Edward Young, who, by the way, Harry absolutely vilifies in his book Spare, calling him the bee, claiming that he's this evil man who is always getting all involved in issues that he has no business sticking his nose into. Sir Edward Young was the late Queen's private secretary, and he is one of the men in grey whom Harry absolutely despises. We can assume that when Harry talked about that he needed to go check on his grandmother to make sure that she had the right people around her, he was referring to probably Sir Edward Young and some others. So interestingly enough, Sir Edward Young wrote this letter defending Harry and Meghan's right to security. The letter was published as part of a summary judgment on Friday, and it contradicts the narrative that Harry and Meghan were completely cut off by the royal family after they were forced to leave the UK. They were not forced, they chose to. Now, if they were forced out, it had nothing to do with security. Perhaps they were forced out because Meghan was such a vicious bully, nobody could stand her, and the Queen had to put a stop to what she was doing to the staff. But anyway, we're not going to talk about that in this video. Maybe another one. So the letter was submitted because they're trying to figure out the truth behind Harry's claim that he offered to pay for his own security. Harry is claiming that he offered to pay for his own security during the Sandringham Summit. But, according to Ravek, no, that didn't happen. No such offer was made until after they had already denied Harry's right to taxpayer-funded protection, and it was at that point in time that he offered to pay for it himself. I think I know who I'm believing in this situation, but I'll let you come to your own conclusion. So I'm going to read the letter for you because it is an important one. Sir Edward Young writes, During their time in the UK, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex expect to attend public-facing engagements representing the charities and causes which remain dear to them. These engagements would no longer be formally undertaken on behalf of Her Majesty, but given the profile of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, we would expect they would still attract public attention. In regard to their Commonwealth patronages, although the Duke and Duchess of Sussex will not be formally representing Her Majesty, they will be undertaking work that is closely associated with Her Majesty, and which may appear to the public eye to be very similar to now. Of course, a number of these patronages have been granted to them by Her Majesty, and which they will continue actively to fulfill. Her Majesty may from time to time invite the Duke and Duchess of Sussex to attend national occasions in their private capacity, and Her Majesty is likely to invite the Duke and Duchess of Sussex to participate in family events in keeping with other non-working members of the family. The letter continued, saying, You will understand well that ensuring that the Duke and Duchess of Sussex remain safe is of paramount importance to Her Majesty and her family. Given the Duke's public profile by virtue of being born into the royal family, his military service, the Duchess's own independent profile, and the well-documented history of targeting of the Sussex family by extremists, it is imperative that the family continues to be provided with effective security. And of course, the family is mindful of tragic incidents of the past. The discussions to date, including with the former chairman of RAVIC, have been useful in making sure that the parameters of the RAVIC process are well understood. Of course, Her Majesty and her family recognize that these are independent processes and decisions about the provision of publicly funded security are for the UK government, the government of Canada, and any other host government. Now, the letter didn't refer to the Sandringham offer at all. So that right there was Sir Edward Young's letter to Sir Mark Sedwill. 
and it's right there in black and white. The family had nothing to do with this decision to strip Harry and Meghan of their security. So Harry trying to claim that the family basically just put their lives at risk is absolute nonsense. It's BS and it's only designed to try to hurt the family. In fact, it's pretty clear the late queen did want them to continue to have security. Whether that's right or whether that's wrong, I don't really want to get into. I mean, I don't agree that they should have had publicly funded security, but clearly the late queen wanted to try to help her grandson. This letter completely contradicts, though, the picture that Harry has tried to portray of the palace's attitude to the whole security situation. In his book Spare and in countless interviews, Harry talked all about how scared he was about what life was going to be like without his UK personal protection officers. He described it as the palace's obligation and implicit promise to continue. Harry wrote that he was desperate to keep security after leaving the royal family, and he begged his late grandmother, his father, his brother, and the staff to continue armed police protection. As the Telegraph reports, in a scene depicting the institution wearing me down and so hostile that Prince William looked as if he planned to murder me, he told them, look, please, Meg and I don't care about perks. We care about working, serving, and staying alive. Harry also said that the leading proposal under discussion called for total abandonment. That was what he said, total abandonment. But how disingenuous of him. I mean, it was not his family's decision to make. It was not up to the palace. It was up to Ravik. The palace's hands were tied. They couldn't do anything. I mean, they have to respect the decision of Ravik because ultimately this is a decision for the UK government to make. It is not the palace's decision alone. This just goes to show how entitled Harry is. He believes that everything should happen just how he wants it to because he was born a prince. Well, no, of course that's not the way things work. I mean, while the royal family is incredibly powerful, at the end of the day, in this situation, they simply didn't have the power to grant Harry his wish. And instead of accepting that fact, instead of accepting that sometimes we have to make do with what we're offered, Harry continues to pitch a fit in the floor like a toddler who was refused a toy they wanted. As far as his beef with Sir Edward Young, it also sounds like it's most likely entirely one-sided. I mean, Harry absolutely hates him. But as far as Sir Edward Young goes, no, I don't believe he really cares all that much about Harry personally. I highly doubt that it is his mission in life to mess with Harry. Instead, it's pretty clear that Sir Edward Young just cares about fulfilling the duties that come with his position. He cares about doing a good job. He's not going to go out of his way to stick it to Harry. But see, Harry is so paranoid. He's paranoid and he's delusional, just like his brother and father have said in the past. And this is why he believes everybody's out to get him. He believes in all these conspiracy theories. He believes that so many people are plotting against him and Meghan and trying to make their lives miserable, even though there's not really any evidence to support that theory. In Scooby Doo's latest book, he continues this conspiracy theory. He writes, Harry's contention is that Young abused his gatekeeping power, gaslighting him when it came to passing along important messages about his lawsuits against the media, and then prohibiting access to his grandmother when Harry needed her the most, all under the guise of protecting the sovereign. Um, excuse me, under the guise of protecting the sovereign, that was literally his job. Of course he was trying to protect her. Let's remember at the time, Harry and Meghan were filing all these lawsuits. They were stirring up so much trouble. They were causing a lot of stress. The Queen was feeling it. The Queen was also at a really advanced age. She couldn't handle the heartache that Harry and Meghan were heaping upon her. So I think that Young was doing his job well when he prevented Harry from going to see her whenever he wanted to. Because, see, the Queen was very kind. She loved Harry deeply. And she wouldn't have been able to say no to him, so it was important that Young could do that for her and protect her. Now, the case isn't over yet. It's expected to go to trial next year. And part of the evidence is going to address whether or not Harry made that serious offer to pay for his own security and whether that message was passed along to the relevant decision makers. Honestly, I don't see any way of this turning out good for Harry. I think Harry has lied. He has contradicted himself too many times. He can't keep his story straight. He doesn't know his story. And so that's why he has no hope of succeeding in this case. The best thing for Harry to do right now would be to drop the case altogether. I mean, the judge has already ruled that the mail on Sunday could very well argue in court that Harry's team undertook a masterclass of spinning to mislead the public about his offer to pay for security. 
It also seems like Justice Nicklin, the judge presiding over the case, is getting really sick of these antics from Harry's team. In the ruling that was released yesterday, he writes, If the defendant does establish these facts, then I consider that it has a real prospect of succeeding in demonstrating also that an honest person could have held the opinion that the claimant was responsible for attempting to mislead and confuse the public as to the true position, and that this was ironic given that he now held a public role in tackling misinformation. As I have noted above in the context of my decision as to the meaning of the article, my immediate impression was that it was alleging that the claimant was guilty of spinning facts to his advantage. As I suggested in that judgment, spinning can be defined as the presentation of true facts and often the omission of other facts in a way that is designed to give a positive message, but which overall is apt to mislead. Having now seen the sequence of events, in my judgment, the defendant does have a real prospect of demonstrating that an honest person could have held the view that this was precisely what was being done on the claimant's behalf. He concludes it with, for all those reasons, in my judgment, the defendant's honest opinion defense has a real prospect of success. The summary judgment element of the dismissal application will be refused. Bravo, Justice Nicklin, bravo. I mean, I really love that he addresses misinformation because, yeah, is it not hypocritical of Harry to claim to be fighting against misinformation when, in fact, he is one of the worst purveyors of this very thing? He and Megan love to put out these puff pieces about themselves, portraying themselves as these great and wonderful human beings. But any time there's an article that's critical of their behavior, oh, they are aghast. This ruling by Justice Nicklin is also a warning to Harry and his team that they need to drop it. I mean, by saying that the defense has a real prospect of success, he's saying they absolutely will succeed. He, Of course, he can't write that because he's a judge. But Harry should understand that the time to drop this case is now. The longer he allows this to go on, the more taxpayer money he is wasting and the more upset people are going to be with him. If he wants any hope of repairing his image, he has got to stop this behavior. But at the same time, I can easily see why Harry most likely will not drop the case. How else is he going to make a living? That's all he's got right now. I mean, we're not hearing anything about any Netflix project that the two of them are working on. Of course, Megan keeps alluding to some big thing that's happening behind the scenes that we're going to learn about any day now, but I'll believe that when I see it. The Spotify deal already fell through. Of course, Harry maybe has a deal for more books with Penguin Random House, but after Spare, I don't believe anybody is going to be interested in any book that he writes. Right now, he and Megan are in a very precarious situation. They're running out of money, and they have no way of bringing in more income. It is sad, too, when we think about the late queen. She really just wanted the best for Harry and even Megan. I believe that she saw Megan for what she was, an evil succubus. But at the same time, she wasn't going to hate anybody. The late queen didn't have it in her. I think that on some level, she just hoped that Megan would change, that Megan would grow up and become a better person. Remember how she said that she had, back in 2020, she said that she had found a constructive and supportive way forward for my grandson and his family. Clearly, the Lay Queen wished nothing but the best for them. And just look at what Harry has done with all that love and support. He's thrown it right back in their faces and thrown them under the bus in the process. But you know, I'm really glad to see that the British government is finally pushing back against these false claims made by Harry and Meghan. It's about time. For years now, Harry and Meghan have said such horrible things about the British government, about the royal family, and even about the citizens of Britain. And it's all just because of sour grapes. They moved away and now they regret it. And instead of accepting that they made a mistake and trying to make things right, they're just going to attack, 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 because apparently that's all they know how to do. Writing for The Telegraph, royal editor Hannah Furness concludes, While the scale of the Duke's legal battles has at times appeared ever-expanding, those public court cases do have at least one useful outcome. Document by document, evidence after testimony, the truth, rather than their truth, will slowly emerge. And thank God for that. And you, what do you think about Harry's court case? Please let me know your opinion below in the comments section. If you enjoyed this video, please don't hesitate to like and share it with anybody else who would appreciate it too. And don't be afraid to click the subscribe button to get more updates in the future. Thank you so much for tuning in, have a lovely weekend, and we'll be back to see you all tomorrow.